Hey guys, I'm here to tell you, it's a lot of work building a hot rod from the ground up. You hearing me? In this video, I'm going into more detail about getting everything lined up, getting it spot on, perfect. So stick around, you don't want to miss it. You just don't. Hey guys, I read your comments. I read all comments, every one of them. Man, you guys got some good ideas, I'm telling you. I got the best subscribers on YouTube. Ain't no two ways about it. One of you guys uh, pointed out the radiator goes up front and across the member and on an angle, so I'm gonna try that. Uh, we're gonna look at it. The bottom neck on that side might be a problem, but we're gonna see what we can do right there. I gotta firm up the radiator position. That's number one, first thing. Most important to me it is. You gotta have the radiator right, grill right, body right, engine right, everything's gotta be right. So I'm gonna start with the radiator. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna, I, wanna, I wanna move it, I'm gonna do like you guys said, move it forward, make a rubber mount, mount it right there. Right there in front of that cross member. This lower hose neck, well, I still go down a lot, but you see I can't probably go all the way down because I won't be able to get the hose on, but I'm gonna see how far down I can go. I'm gonna move the radiator up front and and just just stick a hose, piece of hose on it so I make sure I can get it on and off, and I'm gonna put that radiator down in front, lean it back, and see what I can make happen with the radiator. Gotta do something if it's wrong. And then if I do that, I may even be able to move the engine forward a little bit more. We're gonna see. I still got room for the steering box because uh, the, the engine's gonna be up kind of above the steering box. I may, if I move it forward some more, I may have to go with a remote oil filter, but hey, been there, done that, no problem. So first thing I need to do is get the hood and the grill shell off of it again. Hey, I'd be willing to bet I put that hood and grill shell on and off this car probably a hundred times before I get done. You hear me? The hood <laughs> doesn't come on tape. I mean, it don't. You see, I'm to spread it out a little bit and make it make it fit that grill shell. So I'm about to modify the hood anyway, and it come untaped. So I'm gonna just take the tape off and remove it two pieces at a time from now on, and stick it back on two pieces at a time because hey, it fits better two pieces at a time. <laughs> yeah, grill shell, I just got it clamped on, no problem. So yeah, get the hood and the grill shell off, untape it and be done with that for now. Duct tape, be gone. You done a good job, but I don't need you no more. Grill shell. Yeah, a little low light. Man, that's an expensive piece of fiberglass, but it come all the way from England. <clears throat> oh, more duct tape. Get off of there. Yeah, you just noticed, welcome to the south. I mean, my front suspension's already starting to rust. Yeah. Sorry, you got wire wheels, rust remover, all that good stuff. So I got to build a car and then I'll paint it, I guess. I maybe should have painted it before I put it together the first time, but I didn't, so there's that. Even the axle. Yep. Let me get a, a piece of hose, radiator hose on that bottom neck, unclamp it. Radiator, move it forward a little bit, lean it back, and see if I can make that work. But you know what I wanna do first? I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a piece of cardboard on the front, back, back front of that radiator core. You know, cause those fins are really delicate. You just touch them and they bend. So I'm gonna put some cardboard to protect that while I'm working on it. Yeah, that alloy works radiator be going in and out a lot. No doubt. Little straight edge, sharp knife, straight edge. Worked great, I think. 
see if it works on this side. Probably not. Let's try something different. Let's try to freehand it. Should fit like socks on a rooster. Hey, it fits like socks on a rooster. <laughs> I just need one more just like that for the other side. Yeah, that's, I feel better now. It looks good. A little duct tape cardboard. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Speedway Motors. Even your packaging is useful, so <laughs> appreciate you. I don't know, but maybe Speedway are be paying me to say all that. <laughs> hey, Speedway, if you're listening, Rat Rod Bob needs some comps. So I got a piece of hose stuck on. Uh, I'm gonna get these clamps off, move it forward. Well, first I want to measure. I want to see how high it is above that cross member. Because I know I gotta go down, let's see, 27 and a half inches to the top. So I know I need to go down an inch. Yeah, it's 27 and a half on the top of the cross member here right now. I'm gonna write that down and when I move it, I'm gonna measure it and see. I need to go down an inch, be good. So I got the width of my radiator and I got equal distance off the frame, got me a mark. I got me a couple pieces of three-quarter plywood sitting on top of that and I'm gonna set the radiator on there and try to get it dead center and we're gonna see what it looks like. So I took my trusty wedge, raised the front of the body up so the body's even, both sides with bottom of the door edge with the, well bottom, well that, <laughs> it's level with the frame there where it's cut. Of course I'm to double check for like the roof down to the frame to make sure it's exactly right. That cut may not be the same both sides. But anyway, I got it up. I got the radiator clamp down, leaning it back a little bit. And looking at it, see what it looks like. So you guys know me, I spent a lot of time in the design chair, standing back, sitting back looking. I'm looking at that radiator, how it sets with the front tires and wheels. And the grill shell, of course the grill shell still got to angle out of the bottom, I ain't got that far yet, but before I say, okay, that's where I want the radiator, I got I want everything to look really good. I mean, hey, I don't know, but it looks pretty good to me right there. I'm digging it. I can live with that. And it gets better all the time, because now if I run my string line along that body line, dead center, B pillar, A pillar, hood, you see now, I come up a little bit with the front of the hood so I'd have some clearance between the hood and the radiator. Well, not that much, but I come up a little bit, big, I'll come up enough. I come up three quarter inch, it was probably a half inch, probably be all I need, but uh, yeah. It's gonna be great. <laughs> yep, body line, B pillar, A pillar, dead center. Yeah, part of the hood come up a little bit. We're gonna be fine. So I gotta lean the radiator back a little bit. I mean, I wouldn't, but the hood might fall off. <laughs> or pull the grill shell forward. The front of the hood don't match the grill shell anyway. I gotta rebuild all of it. I gotta put the hood back together, rebuild all the front of it to make it match the grill shell. So I could actually bring the grill shell forward or slide the whole body forward a little bit to, you know, make, room when I lean, I gotta lean the radiator back a little bit first. So I'm gonna lean the radiator back and then see if I need to go this, what I need to do here. So one thing at a time. Hey, I think this might work. And not to mention, since I moved the radiator forward and down a little bit, I could move the engine forward, shoot, maybe a couple inches now, and down a little bit. That'll give me a lot more room when I move it forward a couple inches, look, I, the firewall, it's gotta be great. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna mount the radiator right there like you guys said, that's where it goes. I'm taking your word for it, that's where I'm gonna put it, I think. Lean it back, maybe a hair more what it is. I lean that grill shelf forward at the bottom to make it match the angle. Then stand back and look at it, I'm gonna sit in my design chair and look at it again, if, it, if everything looks great, I can start making motor mounts 
Well, first thing I'll do, I'll get the engine exactly where I want it, I'll get it marked, and uh, I'll probably get the body off of it and go ahead and make the engine transmission mount. I guess I need to set a rear end out of that first because I'm at the, uh, I'm at the Z to frame. I'm at the frame's too low. It's got to come up more to get over the axle. So I might need to get, get a rear end. I don't have one narrow enough, but I got one that I don't need to be narrow just to do that to uh, modify that back frame section too. Hey guys, I don't know if you know it or not, but it's a lot of work building hot rods. A lot, a lot of stuff going on right here. Yeah, I spent a lot of money at Speedway. All four of these wheels come from Speedway. Majority of this front suspension parts come from Speedway. A lot of it. Speedway, I need some comps. Rat Rod Bob needs comps. Okay, I built rubber mounts for a radiator. Got it mounted right there. Now, I can move the engine forward a little bit. Or well, the engine's blocked up, I can move the chassis back a little bit, a couple inches. Still have plenty of room in the radiator there. Yeah, I'm gonna do that.
So I got the inches on a, on a four degree. I think that's close to what it's supposed to be. Got it moved forward, probably by good enough. But now with the radiator moved forward, I need to move the body back forward. You know, it's just, or either add more to the hood, one or the two. I think I'm gonna move the body forward a little bit because I got plenty of firewall room now. I mean, it's, yeah. And now the engine can go down. Since I lowered the radiator, the engine can go down too. Pull this two before out. That's probably how much it needs to go down. Let it back down. So that didn't work. That ain't what I wanted to do. I need to let the engine down. All I've done, let the whole car down. All right, so let me try it again. Need to jack the frame up, leave the engine where it's at. Modify my wooden motor mounts a little bit, see if I can make it happen. Where we at now? Yeah. I think I can go down a little more. I don't know. Yeah. I can go down some more with the engine. I think I'm going to do that. Nope, down too much. Too much. Don't want to go down that much. All right, this is a trial and error thing, I guess. What about now? Yeah. Now, I like that. Got plenty of room up here. Got enough room, a couple inches down there on the cooling lines. I think that's where it needs to be, right there. Still centered. Yep. Transmission still centered. Yep. Yep, four degree, well, four and a half. Make it perfect when I do the transmission mount. All right, what we're gonna do now? Uh, I think I gotta slide the body forward now. See, uh, get that two before out of there. See what we got. Yep. Now I need to come back forward the body a couple inches. I guess back where it was to start with. See if I can do it without the car roll. Let me block the wheel. Yep, back where it was. My wedge fell out on the body over here. I raised it up a little bit. Like that. See what we got now. That might work. 
I guess I need to put a couple click hose on the hood so it won't fall off so easy. So it didn't hit the floor one time. Yeah. Yeah, now I got room for a grill. Actually, I don't need to go forward that much. I can still go back a little bit. I go back a half inch. That'd still be good. I knew it was gonna hit the floor. I ain't broke it yet, so that's a good thing. All right, go back. Half inch. Half inch. Was that a half? Kind of a, almost a half, huh? Kind of sort of a half. I told you this hood's gonna go on and off a whole bunch of time. It's probably gonna hit the floor a bunch more times too. Yep. Now we're looking right. Now we got stuff lined up. Got clearance. Got the engine down where it needs to be. Got it dead center. Transmission angle. Uh, firewall. Gonna be back just a little bit behind that. Inch or so, something like that. I might just angle a little bit. I think that firewall needs to be angled that way a little bit anyway. So, when it, that it blow that air, that hot air, it'd be wanting to go down, kind of the hot air go down under the car. And I'm gonna put vents in the side panel that come out the side, go down to the bottom, so we'll see. But well, that'll work right there. I got plenty of room on the inside too. This is gonna be great. Yep. Yep, 356. That means it's four degrees, perfect. Perfect angle right there. Nope, motor ain't level. Gotta get the chassis level too though. Well, it's a little bit off. Well, the motor ain't off too much. So now the motor is exactly where it needs to be. I need to just angle it this way, just level it up. So I need to get the frame level and get the engine level and build engine mounts right there where it's at. Hey, even the alternator clearer than that was sticking out. Alternator. <laughs> of course, I could have put a shorter belt on it, but I don't even need to do that now. I think it's clear even with that belt. So we got, hey, this is going to be great. Let's see what the floor looks like on the transmission. Wow. I can have a flat floor from there back. <laughs> Be fine. Might need a little bit of hump there for the, for the dry shaft. I might, have, might need a little hump, but yeah, pretty much for, for sure from here back, I'd be flat. Well, no, I, no, I'll take that back. I gotta get the rear end under it. Man, I forgot about that. I gotta get the rear end in place and see about the angle for the dry shelf. Because that's gotta be right, too. Gotta have that right. Let me do that. Hey, Bob, you got that rear end facing the wrong way. You got to turn that around. Yeah, I see that, Red. 
Hey, it's a good thing I got you. Oh, I'd have put it in backwards if it wouldn't have been for you. See if I can turn it around. Help me out, Red. <laughs> Let me see if this Ryobi got enough power to get them all. Yep. Yes, sir. Yeah, that was that was probably the easy part. Getting it out of there probably gonna be the hard part. Well, maybe not. Maybe it will too. Rotor's a shot, for sure. Pry bar. Yep. It's come out of a 76 Lincoln Mark V. Been having it for years, buddy down the road. Just swapping, I got this. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Gonna be fun getting that off. It's coming. I'm getting it. Just ain't got it yet. There it is. It's open. Not not positive. Matching that. I didn't figure a Lincoln would be. One down, one to go. Come on, bro. Ha <laughs> ha. That rotor ain't too bad. The other one shot, though. Get over the mercy brake cables up there. Don't want to lose none of that. Who knows? I might need it. One nine inch. Which is exactly eight inches too wide, so it's going to have to be narrowed. I don't know, my buddy Larry got I think he got a positive unit. Who knows? I might get it. It's gotta be narrowed a little bit, but not this much, but I think positive tracks can be better. For old 34 Coupe, even though it's not gonna be a souped up car, still be nice to have positive traction. So I reckon I ought to put these emergency brake cable clips up somewhere where I'll never find them again. It happens every time. I wanna know what the gear ratio is. Let me get a block. Good old wedge. Work, work. All right, let's see. Mark that right there. Mark that one right there. Mark this one right there. All right. How they both turn? One. Two. 
and a half, three quarters. So 275 to one airplane gears. Yeah, 275 gears, guys, what we got. Hey, that's gotta be great. I want a cruiser. We could definitely cruise with that. What about now, ready to turn the right way for you? You happy now? Yep, I think we can work with that ball. Who, Red? What am I going to do with you? Huh, what you mean what you going to do with me? You ain't going to do nothing. So after all that work, I put the nine inch back in the boneyard and grabbed this, uh, what, an eight inch, whatever, out of an early Mustang. It's about the right width. I think it's like 56 and a half. I need 55 and a half to be perfect. I think this one is like 56 and a half. So even though we're just mocking it up, this would be better fit just for mock up. And who knows, I may use it. <laughs> I don't know if it'll hold up for that 429 though. You guys leave me a comment, let me know what you think. I would like the ride height to be about two inches lower in the back than what it is there. And so I want some bumpers on the rear end that, that it hit before that tire hits. So just in case it hits a bump, big bump or whatever. So I got, it needs to go down before it hits, it needs to go down like what, four inches, something like that. And if you look on the inside, you see I don't have that much. So I'm at the modified rear frame section to get the back end down low enough. Not much, but a little bit. I got these neoprene bumpers I'm gonna use to make that happen. So the rear end hit those before that tire hits the top of that fender well. Yeah, that. All right, we got her lined up, I think. Really, really close. Engine is about in the right spot. Body is about in the right spot. I got the uh, grill shell on about the same angle. Well, maybe not perfect, but kind of sort of like that. So the hood and the grill shell, I tried to tape it together and all that. So I clee coated it together. I just put a couple of clee codes. I mean, I got to build all that anyway, so a few little eighth inch holes certainly ain't gonna hurt anything. Uh, the door, I would have clicked it, but I couldn't find the spots. <laughs> but uh, it's gonna fall off at any minute now, so the door is gonna hit the floor. Done hit the floor two times already. The tape don't hold, so there's that. That's what we're looking at in the front. Something like that. Get a 10 o'clock view. Yep, radiator hose is gonna work. I could probably still go forward the engine another half inch. I might do that before I build the mounts. Uh, got a rear end, got the little old 66, 65, 66 Mustang rear end stuck up in there. Uh, to check the drive shaft angle, it looks like it's perfect right there. Yeah, that's gonna be great. And actually that rear end is about the right width. I measured before I put a rear end under it, I needed, what, 55 and a half. And this one is 56 and a half. Well, it needs to go that way, needs to go that way a little bit, 56 and a half. But that 56 and a half will work too, I guess. So when I, if I have to cut one, I'm gonna make it 56, and split the difference. Yeah, if I, if I cut a rear end, it's gonna be a 56 inch rear end. It's gonna be great. And the rear end, the back is wider than the front. I mean, between the center of the tires, across the back, center of the tires, across the front, back's a couple inches wider, just so you know. Yep, that door is fixed to fall off of there. But I got pretty much everything close right there. Engine in the right position, body right position. Hey, I think this might work. After some highly classified scientific rat rod calculations, I think I about got it all lined up. Engine, body, the whole nine yards. Hey guys, I apologize for showing you the same thing over and over trying to get everything lined up, but I just want you to see what it's like in real life to, 
build a hot rod from the ground up and line and everything up. And because if you don't get all that perfect from the get go, you will not be happy with the end result. Trust me, I know, been there, done that. Hey guys, you see me on camera, but you wouldn't believe the hours I have off camera trying to make this happen. So just so you know, I knew it was gonna happen. It ain't hurt it though, it's, that's some pretty tough stuff right there. If everything goes good, the large welding and the creek don't rise, we're gonna uh, start welding engines and transmission mounts in the next video, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Hey guys, we getting it, we just ain't got it yet. Appreciate you, see you next time.